FMOS is an EVM chain that could bring a lot of value to the Cosmos ecosystem. The broader Cosmos community is very excited about the new project. However, FMOS faced a worst case scenario last week. But what happened and what is FMOS's airdrop all about? This is what I will explain to you in today's episode. But before kicking this episode off, please make sure as always to subscribe to this YouTube channel and give this video a like. This triggers the YouTube algorithm and leads to an atom pump on the other hand. And now let us dive deeper into FMOS. Before diving deeper into the tech, let us talk about the old history of FMOS. Yes, you heard me right. FMOS is a true OG project from the early days. FMOS was called Ethermint in the early days but rebranded to FMOS due to trademark problems and because the project's vision has changed. Let me explain. Ethermint's initial vision was to bring the Tendermint protocol to Ethereum and make Ethereum better. This would have improved interoperability and scalability. However, this vision changed over the years. Ethermint was about to become the first IBC-enabled EVM chain. But what does that mean? EVM is short for Ethereum Virtual Machine. An EVM is a virtual machine that can read and execute code at the same time. This allows developers to deploy smart contracts on a blockchain with an EVM. Ethereum's EVM environment allowed the rise of multiple DeFi projects in early 2020, such as Uniswap, Compound, Maker, YFI or Aave. The EVM environment became the dominant standard in the blockchain industry and more chains that support EVM smart contracts emerged, such as Polygon, Phantom, Near, Avalanche and more. But here's the deal. All these EVM chains are not very interoperable. They find it hard to connect to other blockchains. Let's say you have some die on Harmony and want to bring it over to the Aave version on Polygon. Even though the environment is very similar, both use for example Metamask, this is not so easy and tends to be risky. One way would be to swap your DAI against one tokens on SushiSwap on Harmony. Then you could send your one tokens, for example to KuCoin, and swap your one against Matic. After that, you could send your Matic over to Polygon and swap it on Polygon against DAI again. As you can see, this is elaborating and costly as well. Plus, you want to kill yourself in making your text declaration by the end of the year. Another way would be to use the bridge between Harmony and Polygon. The project AnySwap built this bridge. However, we saw many exploits already and also AnySwap suffered from a $1.9 million exploit in January 2021. In a nutshell, EVM is a dominant standard in today's crypto industry. Ethereum kickstarted the rise of DeFi with its EVM environment and more projects followed Ethereum's lead. DeFi applications like Aave, Compound or Balancer soaked in a lot of liquidity and let the crypto industry mature. Nonetheless, there is still one question to be answered. How can we connect all of these layer ones with an EVM environment? Or in other words, how can we make DeFi interoperable? This is where Cosmos comes into play. Cosmos uses a standard called IBC. IBC is a communication standard that blockchains can use to communicate with each other. If you have no idea about IBC, check out our video where I explain IBC to you in one minute. But in a nutshell, every blockchain that enables IBC is highly interoperable with other IBC enabled chains. And well, FMOS is the very first IBC enabled EVM chain. So. FMOS has an EVM environment where projects like Aave can easily deploy their smart contracts. And in addition to that, FMOS is IBC enabled. This is how users can reach all the other parts of the Cosmos ecosystem without relying on centralized exchanges or bridges. This is how FMOS could become a game changer for Cosmos that soaks in a lot of liquidity. But it does not stop here. FMOS also supports security guarantees. But what does this mean? It means that projects can become child chains of the FMOS hub and leverage its security. This is a similar architecture to Polkadot with its parachains chains and relay chain. Young projects with the need for their own chain but missing security can become a child chain of FMOS. And this leads to an even more prosperous FMOS ecosystem as projects could also launch on child chains of the FMOS hub. In plain words, FMOS's ecosystem could become gigantic. This all sounds very good, however all of this is very hard to bring to reality. 
especially the compatibility between the Ethereum and Cosmos ecosystem is extremely challenging. But why is this so? FMOS co-founder Federico kunze kulmer explained at Cosmoverse 2021 that preparing the Cosmos ecosystem for such a large network like Ethereum and vice versa is one of the biggest challenges for FMOS. The reason? The infrastructure and tooling are entirely different. Ethereum uses Metamask as a wallet extension, but Cosmos uses Kepler. This also means that FMOS has to support two different key types, the Ethereum key type and the Cosmos key type. If you switch to other networks in your Kepler wallet, you will see that these addresses look pretty similar. Every address has its own prefix like Cosmos, Juno or Osmo. You also have different suffixes at the end of each address, but the rest of these addresses are pretty pretty similar. This is because they all use the same key type. But Ethereum uses a different key type. You might know this key type. Ethereum addresses always start with 0x something. This is how the recent problems at FMOS started. As already mentioned, Cosmos chains use the same key type, but that's not the case with FMOS. FMOS uses a different key type to allow a high level of compatibility with Ethereum. And this key type cannot be displayed in your Kepler wallet. This meant that when users switched from the Cosmos Hub address to FMOS Beta, the displayed address was partially not the right one. Kepler first has to understand which key type FMOS is using. And besides, also bugs with the ERC20 module were spotted. Users' funds got stuck and some people could not claim their airdrop. As you can imagine, FMOS faced huge chaos. But what was the solution? FMOS was trying to solve this problem with an upgrade. However, the upgrade failed and now the network is not usable for an uncertain time. If you want to get a deeper explanation about what went wrong, check out our previous episode where I dived very deep into the problems FMOS had to face in the past few days. Now, let us talk about FMOS's tokenomics and its airdrop called RegDrop. RegDrop aims to bring the Cosmos and Ethereum community together. Cosmos, Ion and Osmosis users are eligible for the airdrop. But also early Ethereum users like EVM bridge users or people who spend vast amounts of money on gas fees on dApps like Aave will be able to claim the airdrop. But what is the token good for? The FMOS token serves as a governance token. People can vote on proposals or propose new ideas to the rest of the community. Secondly, the FMOS token also will be used to pay for transaction fees in the network. But more importantly, FMOS will be used for staking. When staking FMOS, you help to secure the network while earning rewards for it. So, the FMOS token represents the backbone of the whole network. When finally claiming your FMOS airdrop, check out Friends Validator. We at Friends Validator also have one of the biggest validators on FMOS. Our team also tried to get the chain up and running again when it was down recently. You support a team that contributes massively to the FMOS ecosystem when delegating to us. We at DeFi Times are huge fans of FMOS as the project combines powerful aspects of Ethereum and Cosmos. It is a true OG project with a strong developer team that gained a lot of attention due to its recent airdrop. Also FMOS is about to give the Cosmos ecosystem exposure to Ethereum dApps and vice versa. Yes, the project faced major challenges recently, but considering what FMOS is trying to do in the long run and how challenging it is to make EVM chains more interoperable, we believe that this was just a bumpy start on an all-in-all -all successful journey. So, we highly anticipate FMOS and looking forward to seeing the network thriving. However, please note as always that we at DeFi Times are no financial advisors and that none of our statements represent financial advice. But now let us know what you think of FMOS. And by the way, were you eligible for the airdrop? Comment in the comment section below. Also give this video a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you want to see FMOS pumping. And with that being said, I will see you on Wednesday for another episode of This Week in Cosmos.